Five states, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois are sitting on a ticking time bomb that scientists are now warning is showing abnormal activity. Instruments are screaming, the ground is deforming, and history is about to be rewritten in blood and debris. When this fault finally ruptures, it will not just be an earthquake, it will be the collapse of America's supply chain and the end of life as we know it for 12 million people. The New Madrid Seismic Zone is a network of faults stretching roughly 150 miles across the central United States, from northeastern Arkansas through southeastern Missouri, western Tennessee, and into southern Illinois. Unlike the famous San Andreas Fault in California, where the ground is solid rock, the land in the New Madrid region is made up of soft, wet soil and river mud. Scientists call this alluvial soil. Think of it as layers upon layers of wet sand, clay, and river mud extending hundreds of feet deep. When seismic waves travel through hard rock, they dissipate relatively quickly. When those same waves travel through soft, saturated sediment, they amplify and spread much farther. A magnitude 7 earthquake in California might cause severe shaking within a 50-mile radius. That same magnitude earthquake in the New Madrid zone would cause severe shaking across a 300-mile radius, affecting major cities like St. Louis, Memphis, Little Rock, Nashville, and even reaching Indianapolis and Louisville. The soft ground creates another deadly phenomenon called liquefaction. When intense shaking occurs, waterlogged soil loses its solid structure and begins behaving like a liquid. Buildings, bridges, and roads that appear to rest on solid ground suddenly find themselves sinking into what has become quicksand. Entire neighborhoods can tilt, collapse, or simply disappear into the liquefied earth. The United States Geological Survey has identified this region as the most seismically active area in the United States east of the Rocky Mountains. More than 200 small earthquakes occur here every year, but recently, those earthquakes have begun to change. Imagine the New Madrid Fault as a giant battery that has been storing energy for more than 200 years. Every day the Earth's tectonic plates push against each other, and that energy has nowhere to go. It just sits there, building pressure. For a long time people believed this fault was dormant, or even dead, but in 2024, scientists used ultra-precise GPS instruments and discovered that the ground is still moving. It is stretching like a rubber band, being pulled to its breaking point. The United States Geological Survey states that there is a very high probability, up to 40%, that a major earthquake will occur here within the next 50 years. But what is truly frightening is what is happening right now. In late 2024 and early 2025, sensors recorded clusters of small earthquakes. Imagine hearing hundreds of small cracking sounds inside the wooden frame of a house before a major storm hits. That is what the ground is doing, near the real foot rift. This rift is an ancient scar. About 750 million years ago, North America tried to tear itself apart. It failed, but it left behind a permanent weak point in the middle of the country. The biggest problem is that we cannot see the danger. In California, you can see cracks on the ground, but in the Midwest, the fault is buried beneath a thick layer of wet mud. As Dr. Elizabeth Sherrill explains, we are feeling our way in the dark. We know the mud volcano is there, and we know it is waking up. We just do not know exactly when that stored energy will finally be released. Did you like this video? Don't forget to hit the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. To understand what could happen next, we have to go back to a time when the earth did not just shake, but completely reshaped itself. It was 2.15 in the morning, on December 16, 1811. The air was perfectly still, until a sound, like hundreds of cannons roaring, erupted from deep underground, after the first shock, in December, another major quake struck on January 23, 1812. Then on February 7, the strongest earthquake of the series hit. Modern estimates place these events between magnitude 7.0 and 8.0, comparable to the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Unlike California, however, the soft soils of the Mississippi Valley amplified the shaking, spreading destruction across an enormous region. Eyewitnesses reported surreal scenes. The ground rippled in rolling waves, several feet high, like a storm-tossed sea. Forests were destroyed as the earth twisted and buckled, bending and tangling trees together. Thick clouds of dust, created by pulverized soil, darkened the sky for hours. Along the Mississippi River, the force was so extreme that the river briefly reversed direction. Riverbanks collapsed, the riverbed shifted, and boats were carried upstream by the altered current. Water-saturated soils erupted in violent sand blows, blasting muddy geysers into the air and leaving behind massive sand deposits that are still visible today. The landscape was permanently reshaped. Islands disappeared. 
forests were suddenly flooded, and in northwestern Tennessee, the ground dropped up to 20 feet, forming Railfoot Lake almost instantly. The shaking was felt across roughly 1 million square miles, church bells rang in Boston, chimneys fell in Cincinnati, clocks stopped in Washington, D.C., and tremors reached New York City, and today, 12 million people live on that same land. If the disaster of 1811 happened tomorrow, the death toll would not be dozens but thousands. The New Madrid region is a fatal weak point in United States infrastructure. Nearly 80% of the natural gas used along the East Coast passes through pipelines buried within the New Madrid seismic zone. These large pressurized steel pipelines were never designed to endure severe ground deformation. During an earthquake, liquefaction would turn solid soil into unstable mud, causing pipelines to bend, crack, and rupture over vast distances. Repairs would be slow and complex, requiring excavation through unstable ground that could continue shifting for months. In winter, millions of homes, hospitals and businesses from New York to Washington, D.C. could lose heat almost immediately. The Mississippi River poses an even greater risk. It is the busiest inland waterway in the world, carrying over 500 million tons of cargo each year. An intricate system of levees, locks and dams keeps the river navigable. But these structures were not built to withstand major earthquakes. Liquefaction would cause levees to fail, riverbanks to collapse, and the riverbed itself to shift. Navigation channels would become unusable as sandbars formed and currents turned unpredictable. River traffic would stop entirely, halting grain exports, disrupting fuel supplies, and overwhelming rail and highway systems not designed to absorb the excess cargo. Transportation infrastructure would suffer direct damage as well. Interstates 40 and 55, major national corridors, cross the seismic zone and rely on aging Mississippi River bridges. Many of these bridges were built before modern seismic standards. During a major quake, Foundations could sink, columns could crack, and roadways could buckle or collapse. Losing these crossings would effectively split the country, with detours hundreds of miles away. Power, water and communication systems would also fail. Electrical transmission towers could topple, substations would be damaged, and blackouts would spread far beyond the epicenter. Water and sewage pipes would rupture, treatment plants would shut down, and contamination would follow. Cell towers and fiber-optic cables would be damaged or severed, leaving communication networks overwhelmed or unusable just when they are needed most. Tap the like button to let us know this content is making a difference. And if you're watching on your phone, be sure to press the hype button right below. The real question is not if a major New Madrid earthquake will happen, but when geological evidence shows the fault system is still active. Stress continues to build, and history has already revealed the scale of destruction it can produce. Yet millions of people in the danger zone remain unprepared, largely because the threat is poorly understood. Preparing begins with recognizing that this region faces risks very different from those in California, and those differences demand a different approach. One of the greatest dangers lies in building construction. Many structures across St. Louis, Memphis, Little Rock and surrounding communities were built before modern seismic standards existed. A large number are made of unreinforced masonry, brick or stone held together only by mortar. In earthquakes, these buildings are extremely dangerous, Walls crack and collapse outward, roofs fail, and entire facades can fall into streets and sidewalks. Even buildings constructed in the late 20th century may offer limited protection, as Midwest building codes only recently began requiring meaningful seismic design. Structures with open ground floors, hillside foundations, riverbank locations, or mobile homes are especially vulnerable. Emergency preparedness in this region must account for prolonged disruption. Standard recommendations of three days of supplies are not enough. Liquefied soil can keep roads impassable for weeks, while broken water and gas lines delay repairs. Households should prepare for at least seven days, preferably two weeks, without outside assistance. Water is critical. Plan for one gallon per person per day for drinking and sanitation. Store it in sturdy containers and rotate supplies regularly. Food should require no cooking or refrigeration, since electricity and gas will likely be unavailable. Canned and dried foods, along with manual can openers, are essential. Medications deserve special attention. Pharmacies may be inaccessible for long periods, so extra supplies and basic medical equipment should be on hand. First aid materials for treating injuries are vital, as hospitals will be overwhelmed. Communication planning is equally important. Cell networks may fail or become overloaded. Families should choose meeting locations and designate an out-of-state contact to relay messages. Keep written copies of important phone numbers. During the earthquake, falling debris is the greatest danger. Do not run outside. Instead, drop, cover, and hold on. Take shelter under sturdy furniture or against an interior wall. Protect the head and neck and remain in place until shaking stops. New Madrid earthquakes can last several minutes with strong aftershocks to follow. 
afterward check for injuries, fires and structural damage, leave unsafe buildings carefully, avoid elevators, move to open areas, and be ready to take cover again during aftershocks. The New Madrid Fault is not a campfire story, it is a real part of our planet, it has been silent for more than 200 years, but the earth cannot stay still forever. Scientists are worried, because the ground is beginning to show abnormal behavior. Those five states will not sink into the ground, but the world we depend on power grids, roads and bridges could collapse very quickly. The sleeping giant is beginning to awaken. The only question is, when the ground starts shaking, will you and your family be ready? If this video made you think or rethink what lies beneath our feet, share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video to help others stay informed. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching and stay safe. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.